destroy their
ourselves in our little energy factories in ourselves called mitochondria, in that process of burning the oxygen and producing energy for the cells to use, about one to three percent of that oxygen is turned into a free radical called superoxide. It's just kind of the way our body's metabolism works at this point in, in uh, Earth's history is that one to three percent of our oxygen we breathe in turns into this superoxide. And it turns out in a year's time, within our own body, we would produce almost four pounds. And if we did not have, if our Creator had not built into us, a way to deal with this problem, we could self-destruct very quickly. So, but our Creator did not leave that unchecked. Here's, here's a regular oxygen molecule, two oxygen atoms and the electrons that are around it. Superoxide has got an extra electron right here. So it's, it's an oxygen molecule with an extra electron. And that is it's a very unstable and can cause a lot of damage to other chemicals in, in the uh, cell. And so we have up in our body, in our cells, enzymes called superoxide dismutase. Now at the end, I'm going to have a quiz. You're going to need to know the name of it. <laughs> So this is just kind of giving an idea that this, this whole process of 
realize the amount of damage that's going on from these free radicals is connected to life expectancy and lifespan. So the more we the better we do a job of neutralizing these free radicals that either are formed from within our own bodies and our own metabolism or coming from the environment. We'll see that in a minute. The longer lifespan we have. Because this day in, day out, moment by moment, oxidative stress that's going on is taking its toll on our bodies. And so each of us has a certain amount of this superoxide just mutates and a couple other enzymes that help to neutralize the free radicals that are forming in our body. But the more we add the antioxidants from the food we eat, we supplement what our own body is able to do. And that's where this added lifespan from increased fruit and vegetable intake is probably taking place because we're supplementing what our body
slide, and this will be another one of the quiz. Uh, quickly fill it out. Uh, this is really just there to show you. There's actually literally thousands, I think maybe upwards of 10,000 chemicals now that we know that, that we know exist in the plants and in fruits and vegetables we eat. Most of those we don't really understand what they do, but we have this categorized in this different categories and they have all the kinds of names. And I can talk about the carotenoid, carotene, alpha and beta carotene, that's the that's what causes the carrots to be orange. It's, it's uh, an orange color, but it's also involved in producing vitamin A. Um, so there's lots of different names. Many of them do uh, things like antioxidants or um, a number of other functions, but they it's just a host of And this is a good point place to bring out a point, and that is that there's a number of time, a number of studies now where we've attempted to extract out of out of an asparagus or an apple or a uh, pear or whatever. There's usually hundreds of different chemicals in there, phytochemicals. And we might think that maybe Phytochemical A is the most important one, and we'll extract that out and put it into a capsule and say, take this, it's going to make you better. And every time we've done that study now, we've seen no benefit, or maybe even the person actually worse. But yet, when we look at studies where we were eating fruits and vegetables, they're always showing positive effects. So the idea is that it's not one phytochemical, but it's probably the, the orchestra, the symphony of all of these chemicals working together that are causing positive effects in our body. And so that's why the, there's a phrase of eating from the rainbow. Uh, trying to pick as many fruits and vegetables from all the different colors of the rainbow when you go into the produce section, taking as many different colors as you can and eating as many different colors of fruits and vegetables each day because that then gives you the symphony of the chemicals that are going to have positive effects in the body. Now here's, here's the cancer section uh, that we from the Five seeds. I'm going to go over briefly. This is straight from the National Cancer Institute, where they looked at different, on the left hand side, different types of cancers, and then what, what is it that they've seen to cause a decreased risk, an increased risk, and how much can be prevented by diet, lung. And in every case, lung, stomach, colon, esophagus. It's either vegetables and fruit or vegetables and maybe occasionally exercise, food refrigeration. But everything that decreases the cancer risk are fruits and vegetables. And the increase is everything from smoking, salt, salt foods, alcohol, uh, fish and diet, meat, meat, dairy, fat, etc. Those are all known causes of cancer, and the amount of decrease, everything from 10 to 20 percent for prostate cancer to as much as 75 percent in some of these cases. Now, see if they come up with a, a pill, the pharmaceutical industry can come up with a pill that would give you a 66 to 75 percent decreased risk for stomach cancer, you would want to get the stuff for that company. That would be a flop. I mean, there's nothing out there that comes close to this as far as being able, able to prevent cancer. And this one is the same thing for breast and mouth, liver, cervix, bladder. It's all fruits and vegetables. And uh, the increase is obesity, salt, fish, alcohol, smoking, all those different things that increase the risk. The same thing, upwards of 50% reduction 
less than three and a half per day, had 13 times the risk of developing cataracts versus those who ate more than three and a half servings a day. So cataract formation is not just part of aging. It's not just something that happens to us as we get older. It is something we can control by how many fruits and vegetables we eat. We can decrease the chance by almost 90% of getting cataract. So cataracts now, we're going to look at coronaries. This is a very busy slide. I'm going to try and explain it and, and keep it simple. Um, basically, have over here, we have uh, monocytes, white blood cells that get into the bloodstream here. And this is supposed to demonstrate, illustrate a stream in the bloodstream of these free radicals. And it turns out that cholesterol in the bloodstream, this is supposed to be cholesterol here, that when cholesterol is damaged by free radicals, that is the cholesterol that the body, the, the white cells, when they look at cholesterol that's been damaged by free radicals, it sees it as foreign and it gobbles it up like a bacteria and it gobbles it up and it becomes a foam cell that then develops into these atherosclerotic plaques that gradually grow and fill up the blood, blood vessels. If the cholesterol is not oxidized by the free radicals, then that this doesn't happen. So it's only when we get the cholesterol damaged by these free radicals that the process takes place. So if you can prevent that oxidation of the cholesterol by eating lots of fruits and vegetables and lots of antioxidants in the bloodstream, you can prevent the cholesterol from being radicals leading to atherosclerosis. So that's where the coronary comes in as far as the, how fruits and vegetables decrease our risk of heart disease. It's just very simple. It's decreased, it's prevented.